In the quaint village of Ireti, there lived a woman named Adesewa, known far and wide as the greatest singer in the entire region. Her voice was like a gift from the gods, bringing joy and sunshine to all who heard it. Adesewa's singing was especially cherished during the annual festival of Eladumare, a time when the villagers celebrated the blessings of life and the bountiful harvest. Every year during the festival of Eladumare, the entire village of Ireti would gather to hear Adesewa's melodious voice. Her songs were more than just music. They were a balm for the soul, capable of lifting spirits and healing hearts. Her voice was said to bring forth a gentle rain and a rainbow at the end of her song, signifying a bountiful year ahead. One such evening, as the sun began to set and the sky turned a deep shade of purple, the villagers gathered at the central square, eagerly awaiting Adesewa's performance. She stepped onto the stage, her presence commanding silence and reverence from the crowd. With a serene smile, Adesewa began to sing, her voice weaving through the air and creating an atmosphere of peace and unity. The villagers listened in awe as the melody carried through the village, touching every heart. At the end of her song, a gentle rain began to fall and a rainbow appeared in the sky, a sign from the heavens that the gods were pleased. The villagers cheered and clapped, their hearts filled with hope for the coming year. Tragically, Adesewa fell ill and passed away, leaving the village in deep sorrow. Her voice had been more than just beautiful. It carried a message to the gods, and without it, the rainbow ceased to appear at the festival. The villagers, with heavy hearts, knew that the years would not be bountiful without her. Ayo, her loving husband, was left to raise their young daughter Yemi on his own. Despite the loss of his beloved wife, Ayo remained strong for Yemi, cherishing his daughter and doing everything he could to support her. One evening, as Ayo sat by the fire with Yemi, he held her close and whispered, Your mother's voice was a gift, Yemi. She brought joy to this village, and though she is gone, her spirit lives on in you. Yemi looked up at her father with wide eyes. Will I ever sing like Mama? she asked. Ayo smiled, though his eyes were filled with sadness. You already have her voice, my dear. One day, you will share it with the world. When Yemi was seven years old, Ayo remarried a woman named Abeke, who seemed kind but secretly harbored resentment toward Yemi. Abeke was always looking for ways to torment Yemi, though she did it subtly to avoid Ayo's suspicion. One fateful evening, Ayo had to travel for trade, leaving Yemi under Abeke's care. Seizing the opportunity to rid herself of Yemi, Abeke sent her to fetch firewood from the forest on the night of the Oro Festival, a sacred event when women and children were forbidden to be outside after sunset. Yemi, Abeke said with a false smile, I need you to gather firewood from the forest. We will need it for cooking tomorrow. But stepmother, Yemi protested, it's the night of the Oro Festival. Father said it's dangerous to be outside. Nonsense, Abeki snapped, her facade slipping momentarily. You will do as I say or there will be consequences. Frightened and obedient, Yemi set off into the dark forest, her heart pounding with every step. As Yemi ventured into the dark forest, the sounds of the Oro festival drums echoed in the distance, reminding her of the dangers that lurked in the shadows. The steady beating seemed to grow louder with each step she took, sending chills down her spine. She clutched her small lantern tightly, its flickering light barely cutting through the dense darkness. Stay calm, Yemi, she whispered to herself, trying to steady her trembling hands. Just gather the firewood and get back home. The forest was thick and spooky, with twisted trees casting long, scary shadows. The moonlight barely shone through the thick leaves and the air was filled with the sounds of night animals moving around. Yemi carefully avoided the paths where the Oro people were known to walk, moving as quietly as she could to avoid being noticed. Her heart pounded in her chest, each beat echoing like a drum in her ears. She felt the darkness pressing in on her, and every rustle of leaves or snap of a twig made her jump. Almost there, she murmured, glancing around nervously. She bent down to pick up a bundle of sticks 
her mind racing with thoughts of the stories she had heard about the forest at night. Suddenly, a rustling sound nearby startled her. She gasped, dropping the firewood and turning around to see what had caused the noise. Her lantern's light wavered, casting moving shadows that seemed to dance and shift. Who's there? Yemi called out, her voice shaking. There was no answer, only the sound of the wind rustling through the leaves. She took a step back, her foot catching on a root, causing her to trip and fall. As she fell to the ground, Yemi's head struck a rock with a painful thud. Pain shot through her head and her vision blurred. She tried to push herself up, but her strength was fading quickly. The world around her spun and darkened, the sounds of the forest growing distant and muffled. Help! She whispered weakly, her voice barely a breath. The last thing she saw before losing consciousness was the cold, distant stars above, twinkling through the gaps in the trees. Yemi lay alone in the cold forest, her small lantern still flickering beside her, casting a dim, lonely light in the darkness. The forest continued its restless murmurs, unaware of the girl who had ventured too far into its depths. The next morning, a kind-hearted hunter named Kola was walking through the deep forest on his usual rounds. As he moved quietly among the trees, he noticed something unusual. There, lying on the ground, was a young girl. She was unconscious and had a nasty bump on her head. Kola's heart went out to the girl. He carefully lifted her into his strong arms and carried her back to his home. Hang in there, little one, he whispered as he walked. We'll take good care of you. Kola lived deep in the forest, far from any village. There were many villages surrounding the forest, but the area where he found the girl was far away from any known settlement. When Kola arrived home, his wife Tola rushed to his side. Kola, who is this? she asked, her voice filled with concern. I found her in the forest, Kola explained. She needs our help. I don't know where she came from, and there are so many villages around that I don't know where to begin asking. Tola immediately set to work, gently cleaning the girl's wounds and bandaging her head. She watched over the girl with a mother's tenderness, praying that she would wake up soon. After some time, the girl stirred and slowly opened her eyes. She looked around, confused and frightened. Where am I? she whispered. You are safe, Tola said softly. My name is Tola, and this is my husband, Kola. What is your name? The girl frowned, trying to remember. I... I don't know, she said, tears filling her eyes. I can't remember anything. Kola and Tola exchanged worried glances. It's all right, Kola said gently. You can stay with us. We'll take care of you. Kola knelt beside her and asked, How did you venture so deep into the forest? The girl shook her head, tears streaming down her face. I don't know, she whispered. I can't remember. Since the girl couldn't remember her name, Kola and Tola decided to call her Abini, which means we asked for her and she came to us. They had no children of their own and quickly grew to love Abini as their daughter. Meanwhile, back in the village of Ireti, Ayo returned home from his trade trip, eager to see his beloved daughter. As he entered his house, he called out, Yemi, I'm home. To his surprise, there was no response. He found Abeki sitting in the living room, her expression a mix of feigned worry and frustration. The sight of her unbothered demeanor made Ayo's heart pound with unease. Where is Yemi? Ayo asked his voice tinged with concern. Abeke sighed dramatically, putting on an exaggerated expression of distress. She ran away into the forest last night. I tried to stop her, but she wouldn't listen. I fear something terrible has happened to her. Ignoring Abeke's insincere tone, Ayo rushed out of the house and into the village square. The news of Yemi's disappearance spread quickly, and soon a crowd had gathered. The villagers exchanged worried glances, their faces etched with fear and concern. It's the night of the Oro Festival, an elder murmured. No one should be out in the forest. Do you think the Oro people have taken her? Another whispered, a tremor in her voice. Ayo, filled with desperation, addressed the villagers. Please help me find my daughter. We must search the forest. But the villagers, fearful of the Oro people, 
and the dangers of the forest at night, hesitated. If the Oro people have taken her, there's nothing we can do, one man said, his voice heavy with sorrow. We cannot interfere with their ways. Realizing that the villagers were too scared to help, Ayo decided to search for Yemi on his own. I will find her myself, he declared, his voice resolute. Abeke, pretending to be concerned, offered to accompany him. Let me come with you, she said, placing a hand on his arm. We can search together. Ayo nodded, grateful for the support. Thank you, Abeke, he said. Let's go. As they ventured into the forest, Abeke secretly hoped they would never find Yemi. She muttered prayers under her breath, wishing for the girl's disappearance to be permanent. Yemi, Yemi, where are you? Ayo called out, his voice echoing through the trees. They searched tirelessly, but there was no sign of her. The forest seemed endless, each shadow and rustle a reminder of the dangers that lurked within. After hours of fruitless searching, Ayo's hope began to wane. We should head back, Abeki suggested, feigning exhaustion. It's too dangerous to continue. Reluctantly, Ayo agreed. You're right. We should return and try again tomorrow. As they made their way back to the village, Ayo's heart was heavy with grief. He blamed himself for leaving Yemi in Abeke's care and vowed to never give up hope of finding her. One evening, as Ayo sat by the fire, he whispered to himself, I will find you, Yemi. I promise. His eyes were filled with tears, his heart aching with the pain of loss. The house felt emptier than ever, the absence of Yemi's laughter and presence a constant reminder of his heartbreak. The villagers tried to console him, offering words of comfort and support. But Ayo's grief was immeasurable, a deep wound that refused to heal. He spent his days searching for answers, clinging to the hope that someday, somehow he would be reunited with his beloved daughter. As Abeni grew, she became a part of Kola and Tola's family. She helped Tola with household chores, learning to cook and clean. She also helped Kola by preparing the meats he brought back from his hunts, becoming skilled at tasks like skinning and seasoning. Though Abeni couldn't remember her past, she discovered a deep love for singing. She would often sing while she worked, her voice filling their small home with warmth and joy. Kola and Tola would listen with smiles on their faces, praising her beautiful voice. Your voice is like a gift from the gods, Abeni, Kola would say. Never stop singing. Abeni's singing brought happiness to their home, and though she didn't know it, she was beginning to heal from her past. Many years passed, and many festivals of Eladumare came and went without the rainbow. The village of Ureti felt the absence of the once vibrant sign of divine blessing. The lack of rainbows meant poor harvests, and each year the crops and animals yielded less. The villagers struggled to make ends meet, and many young people left the village in search of a better life. Abeni had grown into a beautiful young woman, her presence bringing warmth and joy to the home of Kola and Tola. Though she had no memory of her past, she had created a new life filled with love and music. She always helped her adopted parents prepare meats and take them to the many neighboring villages surrounding their home. Abeni looked forward to the different market days as they provided a break from the routine and a chance to explore new places. One day while selling meats at a market in a nearby village called Adara, Abeni met a young man named Olu. Olu was kind and had a gentle smile that made Abeni feel at ease. They struck up a conversation, and Abeni found herself looking forward to market days in Adara even more. Hello, Abeni, Olu greeted her warmly every time they met. How are your parents? How is the singing going? Abeni would blush and smile. They are well, thank you. And the singing? Well, I still love it very much. Over time, Abeni and Olu grew fond of each other. They would meet whenever Abeni visited Adara, and their bond deepened with each encounter. Abeni's mother, Tola, noticed the change in her daughter and would often tease her about it. You seem to be looking forward to market days more than usual, Abeni, Tola said one evening, a knowing smile on her face. 
Is there something, or perhaps someone, you are excited to see? Abaini blushed. It's nothing, mother. I just enjoy visiting the different villages. Tola chuckled softly. Just be careful, my dear. Matters of the heart can be both wonderful and complicated. Follow your heart, but don't forget to use your head. As the seasons changed, Abini began having recurring dreams. In these dreams, she saw fragments of her past as a young girl at a festival. She would see herself surrounded by villagers, watching a woman with a melodious voice singing on stage. The woman's voice filled the air with a beautiful song, but the details were always blurry. One day, after another one of these dreams, Abini shared her experience with Olu. They were sitting by the river, enjoying the quiet of the afternoon. Olu, I've been having these strange dreams, Abini said, her voice tinged with confusion. I see a woman singing at a festival. Her voice is so familiar, but I can't remember who she is. Olu listened intently. It sounds like the festival of Eladumar, he said thoughtfully. It's a festival of song, and it matches what you described. It's held in the village of Ireti. Abeni's eyes widened. Ireti? I've heard of that village. Do you think, do you think we could go there? Olu smiled. Of course. If it's important to you, we can make the journey together. We'll ask your parents for permission and set out as soon as we can. Abeni felt a surge of excitement and hope. She hurried home and spoke to Kola and Tola about her dreams and her desire to visit Ireti with Olu. My dear, Tola said, holding Abeni's hand, if you feel this strongly, you should go. Perhaps it will help you understand your past. Kola nodded in agreement. Be safe and take care of each other. We trust Olu to look after you. With their blessings, Abeni and Olu prepared for the journey to Ireti. They traveled for days crossing forests and rivers, driven by Abeni's desire to uncover the truth behind her dreams. Finally, they arrived in Ireti on the day of the festival of Eledumare. The village was buzzing with excitement, and the air was filled with music and laughter. Abeni felt a strange sense of familiarity as she walked through the village, but she couldn't quite place it. As the festival began, various singers took the stage, each one hoping to bring forth the rainbow. The villagers watched with bated breath, their hopes high. But as each song ended, there was no sign of the rainbow. Abeni and Olu watched from the crowd. When the final singer finished and the sky remained clear, a collective sigh of disappointment swept through the villagers. It's been years since we've seen a rainbow one villager lamented. How much longer must we endure this hardship? Another villager shook his head. The harvest this year will be even worse than last. What have we done to deserve this? Abeni's heart ached for the villagers. She turned to Olu, determination in her eyes. I want to sing at the festival next year, she said firmly. I feel like I need to do this. Olu nodded, supporting her decision. I believe in you, Abeni. We'll return next year and you can share your gift with the village. The year leading up to the next festival of Aledumar was a busy and exciting time for Abeni. Determined to make a difference, she practiced her singing every day, pouring her heart and soul into each note. Kola and Tola supported her wholeheartedly, encouraging her and offering advice. You have a gift, Abeni, Kola said one evening as they sat by the fire. Use it to bring hope to those who need it. Tola nodded in agreement. Remember, my dear, singing is not just about the notes. It's about the emotion you convey and the connection you make with your audience. Abeni took their words to heart. She practiced tirelessly, her voice growing stronger and more beautiful with each passing day. Olu often visited, offering his support and encouragement. You inspire me, Abeni he said one day, holding her hand. Your determination and passion are incredible. I can't wait to see you sing at the festival. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, Abini's excitement grew. She looked forward to the festival not just for the chance to sing, but for the possibility of uncovering more about her past. 
Finally, the time for the festival of Eledumare arrived. Abeni and Olu set out for Ereti once again. The journey was long, but their spirits were high. They crossed forests and rivers, their hearts filled with hope and anticipation. We're almost there, Olu said, pointing to the distant rooftops of Ereti. Are you ready, Abeni? Abeni took a deep breath, her eyes shining with determination. Yes, I'm ready. When they arrived in Ereti, the village was bustling with activity. Preparations for the festival were in full swing, and the air was filled with music and laughter. The festival organizers welcomed Abeni warmly. We've heard about your voice, one of them said. We're honored to have you sing at our festival. Abeni smiled, her heart swelling with gratitude. Thank you. I hope to bring joy and hope to your village. On the night of the festival, Abeni stood backstage, her heart pounding in her chest. The village square was filled with people, all eager to hear the singers and hopefully see the rainbow return. Abeni took a deep breath, calming her nerves. This was her moment. As the final act of the night, Abeni took the stage. The crowd fell silent, their eyes fixed on her. She glanced at Olu, who gave her an encouraging nod. Taking another deep breath, she began to sing. Her voice carried through the air, echoing the melodious tones of her late mother, Adesewa. The villagers listened in awe, many of them with tears in their eyes. As she sang, memories of her past began to surface. She remembered watching her mother sing at the festival, her voice bringing joy and rainbows to the village. Abini's voice grew stronger, filled with emotion and love. She poured her heart into the song, hoping to bring back the rainbow and the blessings it signified. The air seemed to vibrate with her music, and the villagers held their breath, waiting for the miracle. As Abini's song came to an end, a gentle rain began to fall, and a rainbow appeared in the sky. The villagers were awestruck, realizing that the voice of Adesewa had returned through this young woman. Ayo, present at the festival, could not believe his ears. The song Abini sang was exactly what his late wife used to sing, and she sang it in the exact same way. The melody carried throughout the village, touching the hearts of everyone present. Tears streamed down Ayo's face as he watched Abeni, realizing that she was his long-lost daughter, Yemi. As Abeni finished her song and the gentle rain began to fall, memories flooded back into her mind. She remembered her father, Ayo, and her life in the village of Ureti before everything changed. The image of her mother singing at the festival became clear, and she realized that the voice she had always admired was her mother's. Tears filled Abeni's eyes as she looked out at the crowd. She spotted an older man standing at the edge of the square, tears streaming down his face. She knew instantly that this was her father. Father? she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Ayo pushed through the crowd, his heart pounding. Yemi? Is it really you? Abeni nodded, tears flowing freely. Yes, father, it's me, Yemi. Ayo embraced her tightly, unable to hold back his sobs. I never stopped looking for you, my child. I knew you would come back to me someday. Abeni held on to her father, feeling the warmth and love she had longed for. I remember everything now. I remember you, mother, and our home. The villagers gathered around, murmuring in amazement. They were overjoyed to see the rainbow return and to witness the reunion of Ayo and his daughter. The news of Yemi's return spread quickly, and the entire village celebrated the miracle. Abeke, who had been watching from the shadows, felt a pang of guilt and fear. She knew her cruelty would soon be exposed. As the villagers celebrated, she slipped away, knowing that her time in Ireti was over. With her memories restored, Abeni, now Yemi, returned to her father's home. Kola and Yemi were overjoyed to see her reunited with her family and welcomed Ayo into their lives. The bond between Yemi and Olu grew stronger, and they decided to marry, bringing joy and unity to both families. The wedding was a grand celebration, attended by villagers from Ireti and neighboring villages. Yemi wore a beautiful gown, and her voice filled the air with joy as she sang, accompanied by Olu. Ayo watched with tears of joy, grateful to see his daughter happy and whole once again. 
As Yemi and Olu exchanged vows, the villagers cheered and celebrated late into the night. The gentle rain began to fall, and a rainbow appeared in the sky. A sign that the gods were pleased and that the village of Ireti would once again be blessed with a bountiful year. The story of Yemi and her journey from loss to rediscovery is a tale of resilience, love, and the enduring power of hope. Through the kindness of strangers, the bond of family, and the strength of her own voice, Yemi overcame adversity and found her way back to her true self and her family. This story teaches us the importance of perseverance in the face of hardship, the value of love and kindness, and the transformative power of embracing one's true identity. It reminds us that even when the path seems lost, there is always a way to find our way back to where we belong, guided by the light of love and the song of our hearts. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more tales like this, please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more inspiring stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.